Now, what I want to do is I just want to extend this and I think this is probably where we're going to finish. Um, when I mentioned before, I'm just going to scroll back, right? I mentioned before, we've got this idea of ratio division and then we said, okay, there's a start point, there's an end point, and then, you know, in whatever ratio you want, one to one, two to one, three to two, etc., that gives you some point that divides up the interval, okay? One of the things I didn't say um, before though is that all of this is one, uh, one species of ratio division. This is what we call internal division. Um, and the reason why it's called internal division is exactly as the name suggests, you end up inside the interval, right? So A's here, B's here, you end up somewhere in between. Now, you might be able to guess from the name, right? If there's such a thing as internal division, there is also such a thing as external division, which is so weird to me because as you, the name suggests, you end up outside, right? Which is like, hold on, but you're not are you even dividing up the thing anymore? Like you, you end up somewhere on the outside. So let's actually draw this, right? I'm going to give you an example and um, I'll, I'll work this example for you um, on, on my screen. I think that'll give me enough space just there. Okay. So suppose I said to you, all right, we're going to do that same ratio one to two, but I'm going to do it externally. So this is um, AB divided in the ratio one to two externally, okay? This is a bit wild, but again, just like with our internal division, uh, treat the, um, however they've named the interval, so in this case it's AB rather than BA, um, you start at the first point, so in this case it's A, and then instead of going toward the other point, instead of going toward B, to get outside, I'm going to go away from B. Um, I want to go away one and then come back two. That's weird, right? Okay, let's, let me show you how this is going to work, right? Um, I'm going to go in the opposite direction from B. So I'm going to go away from, from B and I'm going to end up on this spot over here. This will be the P that I get. And the, way, the reason I know it's over there is because if I can imagine going one in that direction and now to get back and end at B, I'm now going to go two hops that same length. Can you see that? So that orange part is two, and that black part there is one. It's so strange and counterintuitive, okay? Now, um, back in the day, uh, when Mrs. Isles and I, when we did maths, uh, this, was, this was in like just 2D, a 2D version of this, was in coordinate geometry in the extension one course. And um, there's two ways that you can think about this. Um, number one, and maybe you can actually see it by the way I've drawn it, you can actually, instead of thinking of this as one to two externally, you can actually think of this as negative one to two internally. Um, I, I know this is going to sound strange, but if you, there's a formula for doing this, um, and you'll see it actually in the textbook, in the worked examples. I am deliberately not showing you the formula because um, you can learn the formula and just get the answer right and still have no idea what you're doing. Um, I know that for a fact because that's what I did in year 12. Yep. I think I've really understood it. And I've been all the for several years. And I'm <laughs> yeah, it is, um, it's wild and you know, I'm just going to say sometimes you will learn a thing in, in maths or in another subject and you, you just kind of say, oh, you know what, I'm just going to memorize it, I'm just going to do it and I don't have the understanding yet, okay, but, but you want to work toward it. However, for something like this, hopefully you can see actually a better way to do this is just to use some of our vector thinking in order to work out what this is. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to ask us to go with the same A and the same B in the, in the example that we just worked through. And I'm going to ask us to, to think about how would we find a new point P that divides it 1 to 2 externally. So let me just redraw this situation, okay? Actually, I'll, I'll, again, I'm going to cheat and grab some of this, okay? So same A, same B. New page. Okay, here we go. Let's get rid of all this stuff that we don't need. Do, 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 do. Uh, this is going to be tricky. Do my best. Oh, no, I've just a lot. Okay, I'm just going to leave that there. I think you'll be satisfied. Okay, now if this is where A and B are, I'll make it a bit smaller. Okay, and remember, we've kind of already established, at least very roughly, right, where P is going to be. It's going to be somewhere over here in the wrong direction. Okay, um, so it's over here. 
Now, remember, we know how to get from um, O to A. By the way, you might notice I drew O in a totally different spot, but that's because when I'm doing a 2D version of this, um, it actually doesn't matter where I orient them, I'm just drawing them in a place that's convenient to me. Okay, so don't feel too bad about that, right? I know how to get from O to A. I know how to get from A to B. And what you know is because, just scrolling back, this ratio here, right? If, if this part here is the one, and then I've got the two from the orange components, right? Can you tell me what's the relationship between the distance AP and the distance AB? What's that relationship? But, yeah, but they should be the same, right? That's the whole one to two, right? It's, it's the same as internal division. Each component, each little section is the same, right? So since those distances are the same, effectively what you've got is that A, do you agree? A is just the midpoint between B and P. Does that make sense, right? So we now have two ways of going about this, right? We can just say, okay, um, P, it's some arbitrary X, Y, Z, right? You guys know how to find the midpoint if you know the coordinates um, A and B, and you say, okay, midpoint AB, you just put the numbers in, right? Um, you would say, here's midpoint AB. It would be, uh, I'm just going to do it in... Um, in, in as an ordered triple, I would just go and average all of the components. Do you agree with that? Negative three plus 12 divided by two, um, 10 plus zero divided by two. Do you agree with that? Like, I, I don't know what those numbers are, but I actually don't care, right? Now, I can do the same thing with A. It's just that I, I've got an X comma Y comma Z, right? So this thing here, this is the answer to the midpoint, right? So what I can say is that, um, now let's, so that I can um, write it all out, I'll do it in, yeah, I'm still gonna do it as ordered triples because it's quite, it's quite wide across, right? It's gonna be x minus three on two, that's my p and my b, right? Um, it's gonna be uh, y plus 12 on two, and then it's gonna be uh, z plus zero on two. Can you see me doing the midpoint between p and, and b? And then, actually, you know what? I could do it this way and make it even simpler for you. Um, I know what that midpoint is supposed to be equal to. It's supposed to be, that thing is supposed to be two. And that thing is supposed to be negative three. And that thing is supposed to be 10. So all I've got is just three linear equations. And you just solve for x and y and z independently, okay? So there's solution method one. Um, however, I, I acknowledge the fact that that's only because we're in a, a one to two, like that gives you a midpoint, okay? Um, let's suppose it was not in a nice neat ratio where it was one to one. What's another way I could do this? I'm gonna use my vector thinking, right? Um, I know how to get to, from O to B. Uh, let me move this out of the way, sorry. Actually, I don't even need this. Uh, the midpoint was just an illustration here. I know how to get from O to B, like so. Um, I know how to get from O to A, and in the previous question, I also worked out how to get from A to B. There's A, B, the vector, okay? Can you tell me what's the relationship between this vector A, B, which we worked out before, and the vector A, P? It's going to the left in this direction. What's the relationship between these two vectors? The same magnitude. Very good, so same magnitude, but opposite direction, right? So all of the numbers that we got for AB, uh, what did we get for AB? It's here, isn't it? Here's AB. So I'll just paste this here for convenience and I'll make it an appropriate color. There we go. If that's AB, then without any kind of extra, um, like this is what's great about uh, vector arithmetic, right? It kind of makes a lot of things very simple. All I have to do is take the same magnitudes, but multiply them all by negative one. That's what gives me the opposite direction. Do you agree? So it's, in this case, five, negative 15, and then positive 10. Is that okay? So in this case, to get P, I just have to do um, OP will be equal to First you go to A, and then you go to P. I'm not even gonna do that arithmetic. I trust you guys, you can do that arithmetic. Um, but isn't that great as a, as a way of thinking about um, using your vector thinking to be able to get to there, okay? Um, I'm looking at the time. 
I'm just going to do, I'm not even going to work this through, but let's suppose, let's change this situation one more time. Um, this was externally in the ratio one to two. Okay, so we went over in this direction, one, and then we went to, to get back to B. Okay, um, I want to just change this a little tiny bit, and I'm going to go and say, what if we did this externally? Uh, we did it internally in two to five before. Now let's do it externally in two to five. I'm just going to pause for a minute. I'm not going to talk this through because I really want you to have a go at this. Draw another interval AB, and then I want you to think about where, where do you think P should be? Um, I'll give you a clue, which is that it's roughly in the same direction as we've drawn this, but the, the actual distances, the ratios are not going to be the same because it's not 1 to 2 anymore, it's 2 to 5. So let me just pause for a moment, give you 60 seconds to draw and have a think. Sorry, do you, is there, is there something? Okay. Yeah, yeah, two to five, two to five. So that's what we're going to try. This is what I want us to try. Draw a new A, a new B, well actually same coordinates, right? But where do you think P would be? And um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to wait on you guys. Can you just show each other once you have gotten to the right spot and see if you've got agreement? And then when I see you doing that, that will be my indication to show you my version. Okay, so let me just pause right there. Just draw it. Don't even worry about computing it. I just want you to, yeah, situate where they are. Have you got something drawn, Ryan? Do you do you have something to draw? Uh, I've got a way. Yeah. So, so then I'm just doing this. So A B is the kind of three part. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Amazing. Okay. So um, that's fantastic. Obviously, I can't see your books because they're too far away, but I can hear your thinking, which is awesome. So like you said, right, um, if I position some A and some B, like so, in order to go sort of two hops away and then five hops back, right, that means that what you've got is, remember when we said before, um, uh, that two and five gives you seven equal sections. Well, in this case, the two is actually part of the five. So here's the two going away, and then our five end up being one, two, three, four, five. So what I've got here now is if I draw a line all the way through, I've got five equal sections, but um, these two go in the opposite direction, right? So these are the, as it were, the negative two, and this orange part is the positive five, okay? Now again, we've got this point P here, right? I already know how to get from O to A. I just need to get this AP vector. Now the AP vector, I already know it's in the opposite direction, but the magnitude's changed, isn't it? So what is it in relation to AB? Two yeah, fantastic. Negative two thirds. So this is a different scalar, but the negative captures the direction, as in it's the opposite direction, and then the two thirds captures the fact that you can you can literally see it. Can you see how important a good diagram is, right? This is literally two thirds the distance of this A B vector. Or oh, wrong color, sorry. This is the AB vector, there's three parts there, and there's two parts on the other side. So again, you can go ahead and compute that and find out where P will be. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I know, well, <laughs> yeah, I... Yes. Yeah. Gosh, that's why. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, I think this is one of the situations where the formula actually clouds what's going on. And if you just look at the diagram, it tells you. Um, and so um, if I haven't, if, you, if you're not sick of me doing this now, um, you would definitely be sick of it by the end of the topic. Draw, 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 and make it a good size diagram because you can see how much is going on. Like you need to be able to put stuff labeling onto there and it has to be good enough like it doesn't have to be to scale, but it has to be good enough that you can do some reasoning with the diagram, okay? So I, I'm gonna pause there. Um, I'll, I'll hang around till the bell goes, but um, 
when you have a look at, I posted it in the Problem Sets channel, when you have a look at the assigned questions within 5b, they're not all about ratio division. Um, it's only the later questions, right? Um, but what happens is, as you might have noticed, right, we've been doing multiplication and um, subtraction and um, um, addition just kind of along the way. Uh, and so the early questions in exercise 5b kind of just sort of dip your toes in the water and then the ratio division questions combine all of those different skills together. So draw a good diagram for yourself and um, yeah, you should be able to have no trouble with these um, if you want. Like I think one of the questions in the exercise actually asks you to prove the formula. Um, go ahead and do it if you want. Um, it just adds more pronumerals in. Instead of fives and threes, you just get like k's and l's and that kind of thing. But um, the diagram is always going to be the key. That's my um, piece of advice.